Welcome to the Exploring Unschooling podcast. For countless parents, the journey to unschooling has redefined childhood and transformed their family relationships. Are you curious? Together, let's explore what living and learning looks like without school. Hello, explorers. I'm Pamela Riccia, and it's the 27th of July, 2022, as I record this intro. And this week, we're flashing back to episode 154, Unschooling Dads and Documentaries with Jeremy Stewart. Jeremy is an unschooling dad and filmmaker. He directed and co-produced the documentary film Class Dismissed, which was released in 2015. Since then, it has been screened in more than 60 countries and translated into five languages. His second documentary, Self-Taught, which explores the lives of grown unschoolers, came out in 2019. Jeremy's curiosity about life and learning have led him to make some profound observations. We talk about expectations, trust, and lifelong learning, as well as diving into his experience filming the documentaries. It was an inspiring conversation. And here's just one of the insightful observations he shares. One of the great things about this unschooling lifestyle is there's no roadmap. If you follow the traditional schooling path, there's a roadmap. You go to this school, you do these things, you do these subjects, you do this, you get these grades. There's a roadmap through our life if you choose to take that route. And if you choose to step outside of that, then there's no roadmap. So you're kind of winging it. And in fact, that's why the questions really start to come up. But to me, being in that place of not knowing is the most intimate place you can be because you're so fully engaged with life. I feel engaged and enraptured with it because otherwise I'm numb. That's just so beautiful, isn't it? When we're not following society's roadmap, we need to be fully engaged with our life, asking questions, finding our why, exploring possibilities, charting our next few steps and seeing what happens. I love how he describes that not knowingness as the most intimate place you can be. I hope our conversation plants some interesting seeds for you. But before we dive in, I want to take a moment to thank everyone who has chosen to support the podcast through Patreon. I deeply, deeply appreciate all my patrons, whether you've been around for just a month or so or years. Thank you so much. Your generous support is instrumental in keeping this podcast archive freely available to anyone who's curious and wants to explore the fascinating world of unschooling. If you'd like to join my community of patrons and scoop up some great rewards along the way, check out the Exploring Unschooling page at patreon.com. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com forward slash exploring and schooling. And I also wanted to mention that I'll be recording another Q&A episode soon. So if you have a question you'd like us to tackle, just follow the link in the show notes to submit it. Or go directly to livingjoyfully.ca forward slash question. And if you're a patron, be sure to mention that and your question will jump to the top of the pile. (laughs) And now let's dive again with our fresh perspective of today into my conversation with Jeremy. Welcome. I'm Pam Lurikia from livingjoyfully.ca and today I'm here with Jeremy Stewart. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, Pam. How are you? I'm great, thanks. Now, Jeremy is an unschooling dad and video editor who also directed and co-produced the documentary film Class Dismissed, which you've probably heard of. Class Dismissed has been screened in more than 60 countries and translated into five languages. And he's also working on a new documentary, which we will also talk about. But to get us started, Jeremy, can you share with us a bit about you and your family? Sure, yeah. Um, So we have a daughter who's now 14, who has never been to school, never set foot in the school Ah. since the beginning. And um, I guess I can share a little bit about how we got started. Is that what you're asking? Well, yeah, that that would kind of lead us nicely into the next question, which is how you discovered unschooling and and what that move looked like. So that would be great. Sure, yeah. So so my my wife and I, when when um when we had our daughter, we started 
around the age of two, when she was two, starting to talk about, well, what were we going to do for, you know, education, like the school, school thing, you know, the school yeah. subject come up, came up, like, what are we going to do about this? Yeah. And, um, you know, and at that time, I really knew nothing at all about homeschooling or unschooling, uh, certainly unschooling, but even homeschooling really knew nothing about it, it was not on my radar at all. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we started reflecting on our own personal schooling experiences, you know, and I grew up in London, England, and went to a very traditional school. And uh, my high school was an all boys school. Yeah. Um, you know, so I had the very traditional kind of uh, school upbringing and, and my middle school years were pretty good. You know, I sort of followed along. I did what you were supposed to do and, you know, studied and got reasonable grades and, you know, was doing the whole thing. Yeah. And then, and then when, I, when I got to high school, everything shifted. <laughs> you know, I, I got to high school and suddenly I felt like um, all these doors were closing in my face. And I, and I distinctly remember having um, a, a career counseling meeting. Uh, I was about 15 or so. And, you know, they had these career counselors would come in and talk to all the students about what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> <laughs> and at that time, I was really, really interested in music. I was, I was a drummer, you know, and, and that's really what I wanted to do with my life. And, and I remember that at this meeting, they sat me down and said, well, what do you want to be when you grow up, Jeremy? And I said, well, I want to be a rock star. <laughs> and they said, well, um, that's not a job. Here's a list of jobs um, that you might be interested in. And, you know, they gave me this piece of paper with all these jobs listed. And, you know, Rockstar wasn't on there. And I said, well, where's Rockstar? It's not on there. And yeah. they said, well, that's not a job. And I said, well, yes, it is. There's, you know, I listen to a lot of music. There's lots of bands that I like. And I want to be in a band. And I want to be a professional musician. And they said, well, you need a backup plan. You know, <laughs> you, should, you should find something on this list. How about a lawyer or a, or a doctor? Or, and I'm like, no, I don't think so. So at that point, I suddenly realized, hmm, this is not really serving me very well. Yeah. Um, and so my whole attitude to school really drastically shifted. And I became very um, disillusioned with the whole process. You know, like I wanted to study art, for instance. Uh, but I was obviously studying music and they said, well, you can't do music and art because they're both creatives. You have to pick one or the other. Oh. And I'm like, but I want to do both. And they said, well, you can't. So I'm like, oh, God. So it's just like, it was so frustrating. Yeah. So as my wife and I were kind of discussing school and her, in our own experiences with school, um, she said, well, why don't we, why don't we look into homeschooling? And I'm like, what, 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 you know, what, are you crazy? What, what? <laughs> so she gave me this book by John Holt, you know, um, How Children Fail. And yeah. I read that book and it just blew my mind. And it's just like, it resonated with me so much because of my own personal experience with school. You know, I, so I left high school. I couldn't wait to get out. It's like the yeah. second I could get out, I was done. Never went back, never went to college. It's like, I'm done. It's it. mm -hmm. So this book really resonated. And as I started reading more and, and we were researching online about all of this, it started to really make some sense. And then we went to the California Homeschool Association conference that they have every year. Yeah. And Kaya, our daughter, was about two and a half, three maybe. And we went just to sort of fact gather. You know, we wanted to see, well, what is this all about? Who are these strange homeschoolers? You know, <laughs> <laughs> Let's go see what this is all about. <laughs> and so we went to the conference and we had our little, um, you know, uh, badges on that said first timers, you know, so yeah, we, yeah. we're like deer in the headlights kind of wandering <laughs> around Whoa. and we were checking into the hotel and this young girl who was probably no older than about seven or eight, who was staying in the room next to us, just came right up to me, looked me right in the eye and said, Oh, you're a newbie. Well, welcome to the conference. I've been coming for seven years. I know everything. I know where everything is. If you need any help with anything, let me know. Oh, and by the way, I play fiddle. And if you'd like a concert tonight, I'm staying right next door. Oh. And I was completely wow. speechless. You know, I had never been approached by a, a kid of that age who was so confident, so in control of herself and, 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 and you know, um, so comfortable talking to me and making eye contact. I was just like bowled over. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And so we did actually go into her room the next evening and have a little concert. She gave us a little concert and she helped us show us around a little bit. And um, the whole weekend was filled with these incredible experiences interacting with these kids, uh, teens and kids of all ages, you know, mm -hmm. as you know, I mean, there was no issue with teens hanging out with little ones and talking to adults and looking them in the eye and this whole thing. So, 
that was my introduction to homeschooling. And uh, at the end of the weekend, I said to Kim, my wife, I said, wow, you know, these kids, there's something different about them. Like, you know, if this is a result of this homeschooling thing, uh, then yeah, you know, I'm sign in. me up. I'm, I'm in, you know, like two <laughs> thumbs up. So, so that's what we started doing. And um, so it became pretty obvious that our daughter was not going to go to school and that we were just going to, you know, try this homeschooling thing. But then, you know, then it was a question of, well, how do we do this exactly? And, you know, for us, we, we were, uh, you know, attachment parenting. And, you know, so we sort of already living in that sort of paradigm of like non-authoritarian upbringing for our daughter. You know, we both had fathers that were very um, dominant and I didn't want to be that way. And you know, Kim didn't want to be that way. And so, so we were trying to raise our daughter very differently with it, with the idea of, um, you know, partnership parenting and attachment parenting. And so this whole notion of unschooling just kind of fit right in with that. And it wasn't like we just decided, okay, we're going to be unschoolers because I don't really like labels. Yeah. yeah. You know, I just, I just was like, well, we're just going to live, you know, we're just going to keep doing what we're doing now. We, we hang out together. We play together. We learn together. We, we live in the world together. We travel, we have experiences. Let's just keep doing that and see how that goes. And as it turned out, you know, later I sort of learned, well, that's kind of unschooling. <laughs> so, so, so that's kind of how we began. And we've been doing that ever since. Um, oh, I love that story. Been, yeah, it's been an incredible journey. You know, yeah. it really has. Yeah. Uh, I loved uh, the way you, when you were describing the HSC conference, right? It's, it's like a whole nother world, isn't it? When you can, yes. that first time you, you drop into it and you go, wow, you know, these are people and kids just like everywhere else, but it's a whole different, not only atmosphere, but the people are engaging differently with each other and with the world, aren't yeah. they? It's so fresh. It really is. And, and then also it was helpful to know that, okay, we're not, we're not weird, you know, <laughs> you know, for thinking this, like, you know, here we are saying we're not going to send our daughter to school. That's really like weird and radical in a sense. Right. Mm -hmm. But being in that conference, we realized, well, no, there's a thousand families here and they're all doing the same thing essentially. Right. So, Oh, it's not that weird. <laughs> and in fact, I would say now that that's actually really, really normal. <laughs> and I wish it was more normal. Right? It's more normal for, for being a human being, right? For being it is, you know, the yourself. Idea, yeah, the idea of sending our daughter off to, you know, to school to strangers to essentially raise her uh, and influence her, you know, in all kinds of ways just seems really bizarre to me now, you know? I yeah. can't think of why, why you would want to do that, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i remember too when see i hadn't even heard of homeschooling you know when my kids were first uh when my eldest was hitting school age so you know i kind of thought that that was the only choice um right. yet i was still you know so much and i didn't e hadn't heard the term attachment parenting either although you know now when i look back that's what we were doing because that's just what felt right and made so much sense to me um, and right. I was still, you know, working with my kids as they were going to school, you know, chatting with them, validating their experiences, figuring out ways, you know, for it to work better for them, et cetera. But anyway, uh, once I'd found homeschooling, it was like, like that experience at the conference or even like reading that John Holt book you mentioned, it was yeah. like mind blown. It's like, this was that last piece of the puzzle I was waiting for, right? <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah. yeah, and then I found, like, like you said, this is, this seems normal hanging out with these people that make so much sense to me. I, en I found I ended up kind of moving um, the, the, the way the people that I hung out with, you know what I mean? Because um, so often when I was with um, more, I guess, conventional um, parenting, et cetera, you felt, I felt very alone. It's like, mm -hmm. okay. And, and if I mentioned anything or had any questions, the answers were always, you know, well, put them in school then, <laughs> you know, or, or, you know, yeah. they weren't the kinds of answers and stuff I was looking for. So it was very nice to find this, this whole community out there to which this kind of this lifestyle was normal. Right. And, and to be able to interact with them and chat with them and hear about their experiences, that, that was such an important part of my journey. 
Did you find that? Yeah, and I think it's really important. That sense of community is really important. If you know, for those people that choose to unschool or homeschool, you know, it's really important to connect with other people in your community that are doing the same thing because it, it can be very isolating and lonely otherwise, and you do mm-hmm. feel ostracized and like you're on the fringes of society sometimes. Yeah. You know, <laughs> because pe- people, you know, a lot of people just don't understand it. They don't get it. You know, even the word homeschooling, they have certain images in their mind about what that looks like, and they think it's weird and odd and uh, your kids are never going to be socialized and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And and so there's, there's all this um, negative sort of uh, connotations around the, you know, the, the, the terms and just the practice itself. So it's, it's super important to connect with community. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it really helps just immersing yourself in it because I find, I find my learning happens better, whatever the topic, when I immerse myself in it, right. Whether, whether right. it's, writing or, or unschooling or whatever it is that I'm interested in, that's a way that I learn really well is to immerse myself in it because then the connections are popping all over the place. Right. Right. For sure. Yeah. yeah. So I was curious, what has surprised you most so far about how unschooling has unfolded in your lives? Yeah, that's a really good question. You know, it's interesting because, as you know, it's a, it's a continually evolving process. Yeah. And you know, w- w- when I when I look at this process, the only thing I can really go back to is my own sort of personal experience of it. Like, how, how has it been for me, and 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 what sort of roadblocks and things do I run into along the way? And so so much of this process is about has been about de-schooling myself. You know, like unraveling the sort of conditioned ideas that I was given either by my parents or through my traditional schooling that I have to then kind of disassemble in order to see beyond them. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, for instance, like, as I said, you know, I, I grew up in a, in a family that, you know, wonderful parents, they did the best they could, but my father was very authoritarian, Mm -hmm. very strict, you know, laid down the law. You didn't question that. And, and that's not how I am. Um, and, 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 and yet a part of that is in there still. Yeah. You know, I, I hear that voice come up in me and, and that's been one of the biggest um, challenges, I guess, in all of this is when, when, when that comes up, when that raises its head, I have to catch it and go, wait, that's, that's my parent. That's my parents' voice or my father's voice. That's not mine. So mm-hmm. how do I, how do I shift that? How do I, you know, let that go? And, and, and that's a constant process that's always evolving. And so, you know, with the unschooling thing, because, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty sort of loose about it, you know, um, you know, my daughter doesn't have set bedtimes and has never had set bedtimes and, and things like that. So, and, and it's funny, I, th- I think one of the things that comes back is that she, she questions us, you know, and, and throws stuff back at us, which sometimes is really disarming because uh, I could never have done that with my father. Like to question him would, 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 you know, be, the system wasn't done. Yeah, yeah. And so, so every now and again, she'll do this, and I'll, you know, we'll be talking about something, and, and she'll say, "Well, I don't want to do that." And I'm just like, "What?" You know, <laughs> part of me is just like, "Oh," and then I go, "Wait, hang on a sec." Oh, that's right. We raised you to 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 have this autonomy. We raised you to have this independence and to have your own voice and to be able to use your own voice. So, okay, good. That's fine. Let's talk about that then. <laughs> I know, I know yeah, but, that, that first, that initial reaction, right? It's, what? Exactly. That in, yeah. My initial reaction is what, the, you know, how dare you question I'm the parent. And then I'm like, well, no, no, wait a minute. No, that, you know, let's back off from that a little bit. So, so I think that the surprise, you know, to come back to your question, the sort of mm-hmm. surprise is how often that still comes up, even though we've been doing this for 14 years, you know, um, there's still traces of that old um, paradigm that are sort of buried in me that I just wish I could expunge forever, you know, just get rid of. But, you know, that's part of my upbringing. And, and, you know, I think that the, the way sort of conditioned by our parents and by our upbringing and, and certainly we can escape that um, largely, but there's always little traces of it in there. And so I think the surprises are things like that. Yeah. And then the other one uh, that I really like is that um, w- when I'm really paying attention and I'm really listening and I'm, I'm listening to my daughter and what she's saying and what she's um, kind of putting forth as her interests or what she wants to do. And I, and I step out of the way and I back off and just so, okay, fine. That sounds great. And then let her just run with it. Amazing things happen. 
And, and that's what, and then it always really surprises me. I'm going, wow, that, that really worked out well. Like, why was I so hung up that somehow that wasn't going to work out, you know? Because I think trust is such a huge part of this. You know, I, I think it's the central piece, like learning to really trust that somehow or other, these kids who are unschooled, they're going to turn out fine, right? <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you provide a nurturing environment, if you're supportive, if you can connect with them and, and, and um, you know, not put up barriers and, and don't impose your own, uh, you know, sort of authority on them, well, this is how it should be, um, and just allow it to naturally unfold, incredible things happen. So I'm always really surprised by that. Even now, after 14 years, I still get moments of like, wow, that was amazing. You know, so, that was just such an incredible moment. Like, how did that happen? <laughs> I love that so much. I, I am still amazed, you know, even now, I don't know if I add it up, maybe we're 16, 16 or 17 years, yeah. you know, and, and my kids are all young adults now, but I am yeah. still amazed at the value. I think once I wrote, um, I, I, I was talking about not jumping in and adding my two cents all the time. Right. Right. Because it, it was actually more valuable to not give my two cents because stepping back and letting them take, like you're supporting them and helping them accomplish what they, they want to accomplish. Like, cause you know, I, when you say step back, you worry that people think, Oh, okay. So I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to leave them to do their own thing. No, of course you help them, but yes, they take things in the directions that work for them and their directions that we could never have even imagined. Right. Right. That's right. that trust and, piece and why that's so important, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and it is so easy, I find, you know, as a parent and, and uh, to, as you said, like put your two cents in. Well, here's how I think it should be. Here's what I think you should do. You know, here's, here's what I think will happen. Do this? Right. Why don't you do this? And, and then all of those, if you look really carefully at all those statements, what's really behind that is my expectation. Mm -hmm. Here's how I think, here's what I think you should be doing. Yeah. Here's why I think you need to do this but it's got really nothing to do with what they want. That's yeah. all about what I want or and, what and I think I, they exactly. should be doing. Right? It, it, it's all part of our experience in the world, right? The way we've right. seen that play out within our paradigm, right? And, and our expectations right. and just the way we look at the world, but they look at the world in such a different way. And even the things they're choosing to do, they can be choosing them for reasons that we have no clue about. You know, right. I mean, they're trying to get something out of it that when they say they want to do something, you know, we, our brain naturally jumps to, oh, well, because the, they want to do this, because they want to, you know, get this out of it. But no, it can be something completely different. And when you give them that space right. and trust to do it, you're right. Your mind is blown so many different times, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah. So I guess, you know, it's, it, it's a constant surprise all the time, you yeah. know, and it's a constant, it's a constant balancing act between, you know, n knowing when to kind of step in a little bit and, and, and provide a bit more structure and guidance and when to just completely back off and say, well, I'm here, I'll support this. I have no, I, no clue where this is going <laughs> and I maybe don't even understand it, but that's okay. Yeah. And just trust that it's okay. And, you know, it'll either work out or not work out and that's okay too. That's okay either, too. Either, you know, whether even if it doesn't work out, that's okay too, you know, and, and because life isn't perfect. I mean, you know, I've done many things in my life that I failed at miserably and it's okay. I'm still here. I'm still surviving. You know, it's part of my experience. It's part of being a human being. But, you know, for some reason we get so hung up on wanting to control the outcome, getting attached to a certain situation and, you know, this is how it should work out. You know, it's like, well, no, we don't know how it's going to work out. Just go yeah. for it. You know, trust the universe, you know, trust your innate sense of self and amazing stuff happens. But that's a very, very hard thing uh, to live in. It's a very hard paradigm to kind of be operating from all the time because I think we're bombarded with messages, you know, by the society in general about what should be happening and what you should be doing and what, you know, how you should be living and what you should be buying and, you know, yeah. what you should be pursuing. And all it's just constant, like constant how, mess. Exactly. And how bad it is to be wrong. Right. Right. That judgment of, of, of supposed failure right. um, is, is just, just everywhere. And, you know, it's something from very early years, like you were saying, the, the paradigm that we grew up in, the environment we grew up in, yeah. um, is something that we're always working on because 
that's a huge thing, you know, judgment and shame as, yeah. as, as parenting tools and just, just as tools to judge other, other people, right? They're so prevalent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, we better move on. <laughs> <laughs> and then we could get pretty deep with this. <laughs> I know, I know. I could keep going on just on that one question. Like, for, Yeah, it's huge, anyway. yeah. Okay, so let's jump into Class Dismissed, which is a wonderful documentary film um, that you released in 2015. So it is a fascinating story of a family's choice to pull their two children from school and the journey that follows as they choose to take their children's education into their own hands. So I, I really enjoyed it, obviously. And Thank I was you. curious what inspired you to tell that story. Yeah, well, you know, so a couple of, a couple of years into uh, our own um, journey with homeschooling and unschooling um you know i was talking with a friend we, and ironically we were at the hsc conference again oh. um, and we just started talking and, and and you know i'd been reading everything i could find and and you know educating myself a little bit about this process and the different approaches to it all as we were sort of fumbling our way through our own experience and i, and I couldn't find any any movies you know and as a filmmaker i'm like huh how come there's no movies about unschooling or homeschooling like you know, and there's some stuff on youtube you know there's certainly things you can find but they're usually pretty short and not very extensive. And I couldn't find anything out there that was like a, a real sort of feature length documentary uh, addressing this. And I thought, hmm, this would be a really interesting project. And, you know, I just love, uh, I love sort of throwing myself into big projects like this, especially when I think that they can't really be done. Yeah, I yeah. thought, well, you know, this is perfect. Let's, let's, I, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Let's try to make this movie. Right. So, so that's how the project <laughs> really kind of began. And it was a crazy notion. Yeah. And you know, it, it took way longer than I ever imagined. It took four and a half years to make, you know, it was a huge undertaking. Um, but it was an absolutely amazing adventure and an incredible uh, journey to be on. So that's how, that's how it all sort of really began. I felt like, you know, m maybe, maybe if I could successfully pull it off, then maybe this film might end up being helpful to other people who are in the situation that I was finding myself in. You know, we're just starting this journey. We're, we're kind of looking around for information. There's lots of books and things to read, but you could get a pile of books this high, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, you could, or you could watch a movie and get a lot of information too, right? So that was kind of the impetus, was to try to create something that would be helpful to people and, and answer a lot of questions along the way. Yeah, no, and, and it does a great job. And, you know, no matter where you are on your journey still, it's it's really, I found it really helpful. I still really enjoyed it, even though, you know, we've unschooled and, and the kids are officially graduated, if you want to uh -huh. say that. <laughs> and, and if I, I want to share one quote because it's near the end of the film, and I literally got goosebumps as she was sharing this. But um, huh. the mom was saying, so this is near the end. Uh, I think I'm starting to kind of let go and relax a little bit. I'm amazed at how much I'm learning now. It's not that I have more opportunities to learn now, but I'm taking more opportunities to be part of learning and to engage with life in a more rich and fulfilling way. You could just see that light bulb moment. It's that return of curiosity for the parent. It's like that whole reawakening in the joy of learning and, and truly embracing. They get to the point where learning isn't just for kids. It's not just something kids are supposed to do. It's a lifelong thing that we all get to do. Yes. Right? Which yeah. then helps us, I think, actually better understand why this lifestyle is also a great way for our kids to learn. So it's like this, this circle that just keeps giving, right? <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, that, that's a really valuable step though, isn't it? On the journey to get to that point. Absolutely. You know, and, and I really think, you know, our kids are our greatest teachers. And, and, and so, you know, this whole lifestyle, like you said, if, if you're giving, you know, providing the opportunity for them to be free and to explore and to learn, then some of that has to has to come back at you. And, mm -hmm. and, and it starts to break down those internal barriers that we've built about, well, I, you know, I, I can't learn that I'm too old or whatever, you know, yeah, so all yeah. that starts to break down and go, yeah, let's learn about that. That's really cool. Oh, that's interesting. You know, and suddenly that spark, that creative spark that I think we're all born with and that somehow gets crushed in the schooling system yeah, and yeah. by society in general is reignited, you know, and, so, and, 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 and part of this journey is that that, that spark constantly is being reignited. <laughs> and so that, that moment in the film that you mentioned was a terrific moment where Rachel really, it's like she really understood, wow, it's not just about my daughters, it's about me. 
you know, and this whole idea of, you know, let's learn and, and continue to grow together in the world. And, you know, what, what a great, yeah, it's a great. Yeah, that was spectacular. (laughs) It's that moment where you, that's where you realize it's a lifestyle. Yes. Right? It's not just And that learning is ongoing. You know, learning is ongoing. Again, in in our society, we have this notion that there are the schooling years, Mm -hmm. as if those are the only years that you're supposed to learn anything, and the rest is just what I don't know, you know. But that's absolutely not true at all. I mean, we're always learning. It's it's impossible not to learn. (laughs) Right? <laughs> yeah, it's impossible. You know, you always are learning something. So it's an ongoing process. It's just a question of are you, you know, um, are you aware of the fact that you're learning or are you actively seeking out things to learn? And is that creative spark being constantly ignited or is it being snuffed out? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great question. Yeah. And once you start asking those and, and start embracing <laughs> it, it's beautiful. <laughs> uh-huh. So what was your favorite part of the film? Do you have a favorite part? Yeah, that's a really good question. I do, actually. I think one of my favorite parts in the film was, again, it's, it's towards the end of the film where Anna, the older girl, is standing on the pier. Um, and, and she finally has that realization um, that you know, it's like it's the moment where she finally takes the reins of her own life and realizes that she is now in control and mm-hmm. she can learn whatever she wants to learn and follow whatever direction she wants. And that was an amazing moment for me in a lot of respects, because as, as a documentary filmmaker, you know, during the process of filming them, we spent about two years with them, yeah. you know, and, and th- there was sometimes immense frustration that I could feel in myself about, God, she's just like, just run with it. Anna. like, what are you waiting for? That like, you've been given this opportunity now, like run, do, go for it. And she was waiting for instructions. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 it, and it suddenly, you know, I remember the light bulb in, in me going off one day when I'm like, Oh, I see what's happening. All her life, she has been told when you do something and how you do something, and this is the time you do it. And she's been waiting now for those instructions to come, and they're not coming. Yeah, yeah. Because she's no longer in school, and Rachel's certainly not telling her what to do. So she's sort of like, well, what do I do? (laughs) And, 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 you know, and part of me, uh, while we were filming it, part of me just wanted to just jump in and like, come on, you know, (laughs) like give her a little poke, you know, just do it. And and I, I, I did actually say to her at one point, I said, you know, Anna, you you realize now you're completely free. You can do whatever you want. And I just sort of dropped that pebble in the pond and just left it at that. But it took a little bit, a little bit longer for that to really sink in, I think. And then at some point she finally had that realization, you know, right after she decides she wants to maybe go to high school and then, and then pulls out again and realizes, no, uh, I'm, I'm ready to run. And that was such a great moment. So that's my favorite moment in the film. That was brilliant. In fact, (laughs) it was between those two moments that I was going back Uh and forth. Oh, oh, which one? But so, yeah, no, that was spectacular when, when you saw that light bulb moment for her and, and you could, she really did a great job of explaining the pull, right. Mm -hmm. Of, of Mm -hmm. why she was considering high school and thinking about that. And, and so that revelation, she made it, she explained it really well to make sense as to how she got to that point. Right. Versus Mm -hmm. just, you know, just from one to the other. It wasn't like a uh, light switch flipping on right. or off, you know. It, yeah. Great moment, director. <laughs> no, no, thanks. Being well, able you know, to put that together. But that was that was the kind of amazing thing about you know making the film. It's like you know we I didn't really know how it was all going to end up. Yeah, yeah. We, we just were there to document their process, and and, and it was scary at times, especially mm-hmm. when you know she said, "I want to go to high school." And well, there goes the movie. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's, well, you just killed my movie now. Uh, and I didn't say that, of course, no. but you know, I was thinking, oh, my God, yeah. you know, what am I going to do now? Um, and so I was already sort of thinking, well, what if, what if she decides that that's what she wants? And how does that fit into the story? And how am I going to make that work in the film? And you know, <laughs> so it was this crazy ride. You know, and again, that trust had to come up. Just say, trust the process. <laughs> you know, just back off. Like, just let her do a thing. And, yeah. and I said to Rachel, just let her do a thing. And, you know, Rachel says that. I just have to let her make her decisions and she's going to have to live with them. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, I think that that idea of, pro- of trust in the process just came right up again. And we just had to roll with it. And it worked out that way in the end, you know. So mm-hmm. it was an interesting ride. Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> I was kind of taking that ride there as I was watching. So it, it was yeah. brilliant. And uh, 
you're right. I, I was actually just imagining, you know, you per se, but you know, people working on it. It's like, wow, there's, there's a little twist for you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that was really great. So now let's jump to this new documentary that you, you've been working on for a couple of years now, haven't you? Yeah. About, about just over two years. Yeah. Two. So, um, I'm very excited about it. Um, in the sort of home stretch of the, of the film. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's called self-taught and I was hoping you could share a bit how you came to that. So what was the inspiration about um, about behind this one. Yeah, sure. So, you know, so Class Dismissed took me uh, all over the country and uh, other, even other countries in, in the world like for screenings and things, which was fantastic. Yeah. And um, so in all of, all of those screenings and Q&As that I did and in talking with people, you know, I kept hearing the same questions come up over and over again. And, and the questions were, well, homeschooling or unschooling seems fine when they're little or when they're young, but w what about when they're adults? Like, how do they turn out? You know, mm -hmm. if you've never been to school, how are you going to get into college if you want to go? Or how are you going to be able to get a job where you have to show up at nine o'clock in the morning and, you know, follow the, the rules and things like this, right? Um, so, and these are really good questions. And I thought, wow, we didn't really address that in class dismissed. I mean, a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, we touched upon it, but it felt like, huh, there's, there's a whole lot more to say about this. And, um, you know, and I think it's a question also personally, uh, that I think about sometimes, well, how's my daughter going to turn out? You know, th those moments where I'm not trusting the process, yeah. where yeah. I'm where I'm questioning, you know, maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe she should be doing more of this. You know, how is she going to turn out? <laughs> and so, so I thought, well, let's take those questions and see what we can do with answering them and find, you know, let's, let's talk to some adults who unschooled or had very little formal schooling mm -hmm. and find out how are they doing? How, what do they think about their lives? Are they quote unquote successful? How do they define that? Because I think the, the way we define success in our society is very, very, very narrow. Yeah. Um, so I was curious, how do they define success for themselves? Do they consider themselves successful even, or is it even that important to them? And do they feel that their unschooling helped or hindered them in any way in fulfilling the dreams and you know, doing the things that they're doing now? So these were the questions that I was sort of armed with at the beginning of the film that I uh, resolved to try to get to the bottom of. And um, I found six really incredible young adults who um, you know, answered my call to participate. And uh, I've spent some time with each of them. And, and I've got some really terrific stories, I think, to tell in this film. It's a very, very different film to Class Dismissed in that you know, it's not following one particular family's journey. Uh, they're kind of uh, the stories are very self-contained. So there's six very individual stories, but of course there's lots of parallels and lots of connections um, and similarities and differences as well. And uh, and then it's sort of all interwoven with uh, I have uh, Peter Gray in the movie who talks a lot about you know self-directed learning and and his research around that and so on. Mm -hmm. And Blake Bowles is also in the film. And you know I wanted to really focus on the um, the, the, the young adults, the, the, it's really their story. I didn't want too many quote unquote experts in this film. Yeah. You know, in, in Class Dismissed, there was a lot. You had Sandra Dodd and, you know, and, and all, the, yeah. all these different people and all piping in, Pat Ferenga and everything. And that, you know, that was good. But, but I felt like with this film, I really want it to be about these particular individuals. You know, let's really hear their stories. So that's kind of how the film is, is structured currently. And I think it's working really well and I'm really happy about it. And I can't wait to get it out there. <laughs> that makes so much sense. Like the point of having the, the experts because, um, you know, you were following this family's journey and she was doing that research, right? That, that was kind of the information she was gathering at the same time through that process. So, you know, right. adding that as part of that story made a lot of sense as does once they're now young adults and they've been, um, you're looking, they're looking kind of back on that journey and, and talking about where they are now, et cetera. Yeah. The, the, the expert advice isn't as, as necessary because now you're looking at what they've right. lived versus, right? Right. You know, and, and they each talk about, you know, they each reflect a little bit on their childhoods and what it was like to be unschooled and how they feel about that. And, you know, um, and, and, and sort of reflecting upon how that has shaped who they have become. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that's, you know, that's, that's the sort of the process. It's interesting to, to, to kind of explore that and, and to see, well, 
um, you know, what, how do they really feel about it now? You know, and, and do they have any regrets about it at all? Or do, do they think they could have done it differently? Or, you know, and so these are all the kind of questions I put out there and, and get different responses from each of them. So, yeah, I, I really do love that because, um, first off, you know, when, when you were um, doing all the screenings and people were asking all those, those questions, right? Yeah. It, it, when you take a beat to not feel defensive about it, you know, as, as representing unschooling or, or whatever. Um, these are, like you said, these are great questions and they're questions we all ask. Like, like you say, they come to you, they come to me, you know, that these are human questions and it's not about feeling bad about the fact that I'm questioning myself again. Right. It's, it's human nature. These are, it, it's Absolutely. good to question, right? It, it's not that you failed on schooling because you're wondering how it's going to work in the future. These are, these are questions to ask and it's interesting. And also, you know, as you said, you know, asking about regrets and stuff like, like that might be a bad thing. No, things have always, you know, uh, some things go well in our lives. Some things don't. When we look back, maybe as you know what, uh, I would have made a different choice knowing now what I know now, right. you know, right. These are all part of learning and these are all the experiences together that make us the unique person we are. So it's not about even judging them negatively or anything. It's just adding to adding to our picture, right, of, of what unschooling can be. So. Right. In fact, if you know, I think if you weren't questioning and asking all those questions, then then you would maybe have a bit of a problem. <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's super important to always be questioning. And, yeah. I, and I think that that's one of the great things about the sort of unschooling lifestyle is that there, there, there is, because, you know, it's not, there, there's no, there's no roadmap. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like if you follow the traditional schooling path, there's a roadmap. You know, you go to this school, you do these things, you do these subjects, you do this, you get these grades, you move on to the next school. There's another roadmap, you know, yeah, and this yeah. is a roadmap through our life, basically. Yeah, yeah. If you choose to take that route, <laughs> and if you choose to step outside of that, then there's no roadmap, you know, and so you, you're kind of winging it. Yeah. And in yeah. fact, and, and that's why I think the, the questions really start to come up. But to me, that's so, um, the, being in that place of not knowing is the most intimate place you can be because you're so fully engaged with life, right? Because you don't know. So you have to start questioning, well, what about this? And what about that? And hmm, have I looked at that? And what have I explored about this? That's living. Yeah. As opposed to just saying, oh, I'm supposed to go do this. Oh, I'm supposed to go do that. Oh, I'm I guess I'm going to do this now, right? There's no, there's no, you're not, you're not, you're not rubbing up against life. You know, you're not crashing into things. Oh, and so yeah. I think that, you know, that, that that's, to me, that's the most exciting part of this lifestyle is just crashing into stuff, figuring it out, you know, trying to, I don't know what's going on half the time, you know, and that's okay. Yeah. But, but that, but I feel alive by that. You know, I feel engaged and, 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 and yeah. And, and enraptured with it. You know, it's like, <laughs> because otherwise I'm numb. That was a huge yeah. revelation for me, right? Because, I mean, and we were a few years in, into unschooling, probably, when I suddenly had the realization that, because you're always like, oh, if I could just like solve X, Y, and Z, it would <laughs> finally be peaceful, right? And, and that was supposed right. to be my goal, that like all the problems would be worked out, and then we could finally relax and just live. <laughs> And finally, the rev the revelation, like, oh, that's life, you know, uh -huh. all yeah. these questions and bumping up against things, and 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 just like, oh, well, should I take that step? Should we do this? And that was that was all good. That was life, and those weren't going to end. There wasn't, you know, some yeah. little white peaceful room sitting there just <laughs> waiting for me to get there if I could just figure everything out. <laughs> Yeah, it's that kids. idea that if we could just get this and this, and, and then that would, and then those would be the pieces would be we need, and everything would be fine. But that's yeah. just so not what reality is. You know, reality is messy. Yeah, life is messy. You know, we're going to crash into stuff. We're going to rub up against things, and that's part of living. And and we can't. You know, there's only so much control that we can. Ha we think we have control, but we actually have almost none. Yeah. You know, and and so again, coming back to trust. You know, trusting that somehow or other, the universe provides what we need. If we're open to it, if we're receptive, if we're responsive, amazing stuff happens, you know, not just for our kids, but for ourselves. And, and that's why I love the unschooling lifestyle so much is because we're constantly thrown into that 
whirlpool of we don't really know what's going on. Yeah. And wow, isn't life incredible? It's so interesting. (laughs) There's never a dull moment. (laughs) Right. And like you said earlier, you know, pulling it all around. Um, We're students of our children, really. That that's how I learned it was by seeing them, you know, these bumps in the road and the things they ran up against. They weren't the end of the world to them. Right. Right. They weren't seeing this as failure or anything. It was like, oh, there's there's a new fact or a new something, you know, Uh (laughs) and here we go. And just seeing them engage um, so fiercely with their lives, it it woke me up to to doing that as well, to to remember what that was like and embrace everything. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So you are in the production home stretch right now with with uh, self taught, and you're running a Kickstarter campaign to help with the final stages. So I wanted to give you the opportunity to share a bit of information about the campaign and where people could check it out because I think it's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll send you I'll send you a, a link that maybe you could post yep. too. But um, so it's on Kickstarter. If you just go on Kickstarter and search for self taught. Um, it'll come up. And so it's an active campaign right now. We have about 14 days left. So it's the time is ticking. <laughs> and, um, you know, unfortunately with, you know, making independent films is a, is a, is a pretty labor intensive and expensive process. You know, I have no, no big funding from, you know, film companies or anything. This is entirely a self project, <laughs> a self taught project in a sense. Um, so, you know, I really, I really need the support of the community to get behind the film and support it as they did with Class Dismissed. And, um, you know, Class Dismissed could never have done what it's done without the support of the community. And I'm eternally grateful to everyone that got behind the film and supported it. And, you know, it's gone out there and, and I get messages almost uh, still to this day from people saying, oh, I saw Class Dismissed and it changed my life and now we're homeschooling and we love it. And I'm like, and to me, that's like, wow, that's so great, you know? Yeah. So anyway, the campaign's running. We have only 14 days left. Um, if we don't meet our goal, then I don't know what I'm going to do. I have to, you know, somehow I've got to get the funds together to finish the film. And, um, you know, I've put in a couple of years of work on it now. I mean, I don't pay myself on these projects. This is all, I just, you know, this is a labor of love because I really passionately believe in this lifestyle and passionately believe in this, in the subject matter. So, um, so yeah, so I really encourage people if, if they want to, support it to get in there and do what you can, you know, and I know it's tough sometimes, you know, for people, but any, anything helps and every dollar helps. And I'm hoping we can make uh, the goal and I can get to finish the film, in which case it would be coming out in uh, spring of next year. Okay. So, that's awesome. you know, I, I have a, I have a finished cut of the film pretty much. So, and it's feeling good. There's just a lot of loose ends to tie up, but particularly the biggest thing is music, you know, getting music in there. You have to pay for music. It's not free. You yeah. know, I have a composer in mind and you know, I really want to be able to pay him what he's worth, you know, to, to, yeah. to, to write some fabulous music for the film and really put the icing on the cake, so to speak, as I say in, in the pitch, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, that's great. So. I will definitely, we'll have links to it in the show notes. And when the episode goes out, we'll share it because yeah, I would love to see, to see it come out and, and you're right. There are always these pieces where you're working with other people. Like even when, when you're putting so much of your own heart and soul into a project, when you're asking other people to be involved, you know, it's, it's their work, right? So you want to be right. able to support them that way as of well. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So our last question, Jeremy, as an uh-huh. unschooling dad, what piece of advice would you like to share with dads who are maybe considering or just starting out on this journey? Yeah, that's a really good question. It's um, it's it's challenging, I think. You know, and and uh, uh, the risk of stereotyping. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think that generally speaking, it's it's you know the mom that's going to take on the bulk of. Yeah. Of, of this journey with their kids, you know, uh, again, I, I know that's a stereotype, but generally I think generally. that's fairly true. And yeah. So, so, you know, so the dads, I, dads often, I feel like get sort of shortchanged a little bit or, the, or they get a little bit, you know, they're not quite as in the picture as they should be, you know, they're out working and, you know, and I've run into this too in, in my working life where all of the conversation at work revolves around school and the, what the kids are doing at school. Mm-hmm. And I remember sitting, you know, sitting around the lunch table and stuff and everyone's going, oh, my kid's this great and that thing. And I, have, I, I can't contribute to that conversation <laughs> because my daughter's not in school. Yeah. So, you know, and, and so there's this feeling of feeling kind of left out a little bit. And then you come home from work and, and it's like, well, 
the kids, what have the kids been doing? And the house is a disaster. You know, there's Legos and there's toys, there's stuff everywhere. It's just, you know, it looked like a bomb landed in the, in the house. And that can be very, very hard, I think, yeah. for, 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 for new dads who are just starting out this journey and trying to figure out what does this mean. And I think, you know, societally too, there's this, there's this message that, you know, the father is supposed to be the provider. And, you know, even, even in this day and age, you know, yeah. it seems like a 1950s thing. But, you know, it's like you've got to be the provider and go to work and pay for the, you know, the family and all of that. And I think that messaging is still in there. So, so for dads who want to step outside of that and question that, it's really challenging. Um, so advice, I would say just be really open to the process. Again, try to really find that, that place of trust that somehow or other, you know, you can come home from work and the house is a mess and your kids have been laying around reading all day or something and you think, well, what have they really learned? They've learned an amazing amount, <laughs> actually. <laughs> and, and just try to, you know, try to kind of tune, tune uh, like retune the dial a little bit uh, and, and, and spend time to connect with them when you come home from work. You know, like make sure that you have time to connect and listen to what they've been up to and let that in and you know, be free of judgment, you know. Because it's hard in the workplace, you know, there's so much of that sort of success driven, you know, you know, get the job and get the promotion and make the money and all of this. And all of that's just being bombarded all the time. And to come home to this sort of free form, like crazy, wild, unschooling thing can be really challenging. Yeah, you're living so in I think both worlds all the time, yeah. right? Yeah, you know, yeah. so I think that's part of it, you know. And uh, so, yeah, I, I think the main the main message would be just to to trust, you know, trust your Trust your children, really trust your children and, and, and be there to support them in whatever way you could possibly can and learn from them, you know, really allow, allow that mirroring to happen. You know, for me, my daughter is a mirror to me. When I look at her, she just mirrors stuff back to me, whether I want it or not. Yeah. You know, and so I see, I, I see things about myself in her that sometimes are hard to see and I go, wow. That's really interesting, you know. I, I now I have to shift something. I got to, you know, tune that dial a little differently there, because she just reflected it right back at me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and, so, and that's and that's difficult, you know. So, so I just be open, I guess, you know, and trust. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. It that's that's a huge, just just being open, wider, right? To, yeah. to seeing that, seeing what's happening. You know, rather it's that draw, letting go of the expectations a little bit, isn't it? Letting go of yeah, that. and I think you know, I think yeah, I mean, I think, I think that that sort of attitude can be applied to everything in life. You know, it's like I, I think you know, as we as we sort of go through this journey of life, things tend to get narrower and narrower and narrower, or, or they can. You know, like we're, we're forced into these little funnels. Yeah, and. and you know, to me, the, the, the challenge is, uh, is to break that funnel down and actually get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and let more and more and more in. You know, let more of the world in, not less. You know, the more of the world you let in, the richer your life becomes. And, you know, and, and it's hard because, you know, we, we have all these messages. Oh, well, you're not supposed to do that or you're supposed to be doing this. Or, you know, so break down those barriers and, and, and include, even include that, include all the messages that say you should be doing this, allow those messages in and then question them. Brilliant. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, so don't, don't try to push them away yeah. because I think that actually funnels you and gets you even more narrow minded. It does it's because like, you're okay, trying to ignore. So society, you know, society or this person or my parents or whoever it is is saying, oh, your kids should go to school. Okay. Well, let's allow that in. Mm -hmm. You know, allow that, allow that discontent in and, and sit with that and now just expand it and, and, and make your container bigger, right? So that now yeah. you've got room for those things in there too. And you keep making your container bigger and more stuff comes in and you make your container even bigger, you know? And I think that's the, the journey of unschooling is just allowing as much of the world in as possible and seeing what works and discarding what doesn't, but at least allowing it all to kind of percolate together in one big pot. <laughs> so, because you're building your view of the world right and you learn so yeah. much more and you make make stronger connections that make more sense to you when you're when all the bits of the world are in there to consider rather than just having this narrow narrow focus and like back to when we were talking about the questions that you were asking for self-taught right it's like if you don't consider those if you feel like that's a failure and you're trying to avoid that you know mm -hmm. you're not 
you're, you're like you said, you're just narrowing your your experience. You're narrowing your view of the world, and not only does that do, not do yourself a service because you're you're not learning. You're you're totally focused, but the energy that it takes eventually to try and keep all that noise or all those other voices out because you're going to have to do that forever. Whereas if you open up your world and you connect that and you figure out, you know, why they think that and you understand why they're, where they're coming from, you understand how that makes sense to them and you understand why it doesn't make sense for you, then then live in the world with all of it, right? Right. I mean, I think you said something really great there about, you know, um, the energy that it takes to resist and to, to push away these things that don't fit, you know, uh, or that are sort of encroaching upon our worldview or whatever. Uh, it takes so much energy that you end up robbing yourself of that creative spirit that we talked about, that igniting that spirit, you know, that we all have in us. Uh, and so it gets snuffed out. Yeah. And then you, your life is tiny, you know, because it's like, oh, well, I don't want to you know, push this away and push that away. It's like, no, no, invite all of it in. Just keep making the container bigger. Because, you know, we all have the potential for just vast amounts of, of um, compassion and empathy and, you know, but we, we don't use it. You know, we, we want to separate ourselves or they're different from us or this is that, you know, and, and, and so we just become narrower and narrower and narrower. And I think it, we should be doing the opposite, you know, and that's what I love about unschooling is it kind of, in a sense, it sort of forces you to do that because there's no roadmap, as I said, you know, you're yeah. sort of winging it sometimes and learning to trust and Ultimately, the rewards are so much greater because as, as, you, as you begin to go through this process and you see that things miraculously work out, <laughs> you know, these kids turn out great. Yeah. Uh, they're amazing human beings. But how could that be? You know, it's like, it's mind blowing. What do you mean you never went to school and now, now you're doing like, you know, a PhD in biology? What? That makes yeah. no sense. But it does make sense. And so and when you really start to see that, oh, yeah, that does make sense, then all of a sudden, you know, it becomes easier to kind of navigate that sense of unknowing or not, not knowing this, you know? Yeah. No. So anyway. That's amazing. <laughs> and we could talk for ages, but I want to thank you so, so much. I know because it's brilliant and it's, it's, it's so true. It, it, yeah, it's spectacular. Well, I get so fired up by these conversations. I know, too, I know. Like we see both of us using our hands. hands all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I just want to keep going. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because I already feel a certain sense of expansion happening. I know, I'm ready to like get two things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Yep, yep. Okay, well, thank you so, so much for taking the time to speak with me, Jeremy. It was You're awesome. You're so welcome. I really appreciate it. <laughs> You're so welcome. It's a pleasure. Oh, it was, it was. And um, I know I will share the Kickstarter uh, link and everything. Is there any other place um, where people can connect with you online? Um, well, I'll send you a, I'll shoot you a quick email after this with the, okay. you know, the website for Class Dismissed and for Self Taught and the Kickstarter URL. And um, yeah, that's, that's about it. That's where they can find me. Brilliant. Thank Hovering you. around in the fringes. <laughs> Is there busily, busily with you? Yay! <laughs> All right, have a wonderful day, Jeremy. Thank you so much, Pam. Really nice to connect with you. It was lovely. Thank you. And thank you for everything that you do too. It's wonderful to have people like you out there adding another voice to the conversation. You know, letting people know that they have choices. That you know, you don't have to have this little narrow view. It's like yeah. open up, people. Open up. Open up. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's awesome. Thank you so. So much. thank you. I hope you found this episode helpful on your unschooling journey. And be sure to check out the growing podcast archive. The conversations never go out of date. You can find more information about my books, the Living Joyfully Network online community, and the Childhood Redefined Unschooling Summit online course at my website, livingjoyfully.ca. 